Climbing through weaves is honestly the most fun I've had playing Vermintide. Because you're going up against the hardest content the game has to offer, you have to work nearly perfectly with your team to execute a strategy. This can lead to some of the most intense moments and is something you just don't find to this extent in other parts of the game. That being said, it is very difficult to find any content of people actually beating weaves in a way that is easy to follow or replicable. Now that I've finally completed my own climb, I've decided to remedy that situation. In this series, I'm going to compile all the things I've learned while running weaves. This ranges from things that were taught to me by those that came before me, to things I've discovered myself. Hopefully, once you inevitably find that weave that you just can't seem to get past, this video series will come in handy. Welcome to the Weaves Guidebook, an introduction. This video is going to be focused on all the little things that will help you be successful on all weaves, as it would be simply too much to reiterate them every time they became relevant. To start, it is important to know how the weave difficulty system is broken down. Weaves 1 through 10 are recruit difficulty, 11 through 20 are veteran, 21 to 30 are champion, and 31 to 40 are legend. The weaves then begin repeating, but at a higher difficulty level so that both Weaves 1 and 41 are Light Bastion, but 41 is at Cataclysm difficulty. Once you've reached Weave 61, the difficulty is upped to Cata 2, and once you've reached 81, the difficulty is upped again to Cata 3. Once you reach Weave 121, the enemies begin damage scaling up to 1000%, which means they are dealing 10 times the damage they usually do on Cata 3. This means nearly everything will one-shot you, including Skaven Slaves. Obviously, this makes things very difficult. It is also important to understand how spawns work in Weaves. In normal Vermintide, there are roaming enemies, which are the enemies that are already on the map as you roam around. Then there are hordes, which will spawn at semi-random times and bring all the enemies from one direction. This leads to a nice flow of gameplay that is conducive to the team pushing through the map together. This is not the case in Weaves. In Weaves, you still have the roaming enemies, but spawns are triggered by crossing a certain threshold, and these spawns are predetermined. This means that, if an assassin spawns when you cross a particular doorway, that assassin will always spawn when you cross said doorway. These spawns also differ from traditional Vermintide in that they come from all directions. This means that pushing through the map together can frequently be a death sentence as the party will suddenly find itself surrounded by enemies. The furthest forward player's location also determines where a party member will respawn after they die. Because of this, make sure to back up as far as possible when someone goes down to make sure they respawn as close to the start of the map as possible. This will make it so that you don't have to trigger as many spawns to go pick them up. The combination of the excessive damage enemies can deal, and the different nature with which they spawn, is conducive to a very different style of gameplay. In Weaves, I have found that it is actually most efficient to find a safe spot for the party to stay. This is typically going to be somewhere they can put their back against, so they can focus all their energy on fighting the enemies in front of them. Then, one player in the party will be designated as a spawner. The spawner's job is to go and cross those thresholds to get enemies to spawn, and bring them back to the party so that they can begin cleaning up the mess. Remember, weaves are a race against the clock, so triggering as many spawns as your party can handle at once is the most efficient way to get through them. It is also important to note that the maps in weaves are designed differently than the maps in normal Vermintide. If you were to try and send a spawner out in campaign maps or in chaos wastes, they would reach a drop down, or a point of no return. This is not the case in Weaves maps. Every map is designed so that you have free range of all the map at all times. This makes mobility, particularly move speed, or efficient move techs, much more valuable in Weaves gameplay. Handmaiden is my personal pick for spawner, but there are other classes that certainly work. Sometimes, despite having a path back to the party, the spawner will still find themselves in situations where they are stuck out. This could be because they've spawned too many enemies, or they have a series of disablers that are coming after them. In this scenario, it is important to know the leave and rejoin method. 
This very literally is as simple as the title would suggest, but there are some quirks that you might want to know about. Typically, when attempting to join a game that you aren't supposed to be able to join, such as Deeds, you have to load all the way into someone else's game and then join the game you were actually trying to join. If you make sure to turn off restricted party size when selecting which weave you want to play, this won't be a problem. Having this turned off will technically mean any rando could join your game, but no one plays weaves, so it has literally never happened to me. Using this strategy means that you don't even have to reload into the keep before attempting to rejoin the game, cutting down on the amount of time you are out of the fight, as demonstrated here. You are going to want to make sure the host is always safe, as they are who you will rejoin on. If they have recently died, you will rejoin the game where you left. If they are currently rescuable, you will rejoin the game on their respawn point. Unless you are trying to safely move the entire party to a forward position, make sure your spawner is not your game's host, as this will make their job far more unsafe. It's not only the spawner who is going to want to take advantage of this method. If a non-host player dies and can be rescued but in an unsafe position, they are going to want to be ready to leave and rejoin so that they can spawn back on the party. Leave and rejoin can also be utilized to alter party comp mid-fight. Say you really need the DPS of the shade for the first section of a weave, but also really need the handmaiden's mobility for the second section of a weave. Once you hit the point where you're going to start needing the handmaiden, simply leave the game, load into the keep, change into the handmaiden, and rejoin the game. You will even still be carrying all the items you left with. Unfortunately, this does not work with objective items such as barrels. As I've touched on, playing high level weaves is very different than playing any other mode in the game. Your goal is not typically to clear out hordes on your way to a location, it is instead to complete a rotation of various objectives to open the portal at the end and then clear out some hordes in the final arena. Because of the different objective and the ridiculous amount of damage enemies deal, playing defensively and staying alive become paramount to your group's success. Because of this, certain weapons, classes, and team comps function differently in weaves than they do in other game modes. This trend remains true when comparing low weave gameplay to high weave gameplay. Range DPS is king in weaves. Because you are typically going to be funneling a large quantity of enemies into a single area, any ranged weapon with a large AoE damage is going to be the most efficient bet at removing hordes. This also helps you stay out of range of enemies potentially hitting you, as you can no longer afford to hit trade. Another big winner in weaves are shields. Because you're going to be doing all your damage with your ranged weapon anyway, you really only need the melee weapon to block, which shields are obviously great at. This comes with the added benefit of being able to block rattling gun fire, which becomes surprisingly relevant when they can kill you in 3 shots. As I said, but is worth reiterating, staying alive is the most valuable thing you can do for your team. When in doubt, hold block. Try only to fire when you're absolutely sure you won't be hit. It can be very tempting to clear out the 3 or 4 roaming enemies that are following you, but they pose a far greater threat to you than they normally do, and you don't really gain anything from killing them. Keeping your block up, especially if you have a shield, can basically guarantee that you stay alive for long enough to res your allies or have your party kill the enemies for you. The other two big winners in weaves are plus move speed and plus stamina. In campaign and chaos wastes, you only get two slots for properties that have to be maxed out on red weapons. In weaves, you get 10 slots that can be put into any mix of potential properties. Plus 5% move speed only takes one property slot in your trinket and makes it so many move techs can outrun mobs, greatly improving survivability. Plus stamina only takes one property slot each on both of your weapon and your necklace, making it very easy to reach plus 4 stamina without sacrificing much else. Another thing to note for mid-level weaves is that your hero power is a great deal higher in weaves than normal gameplay. This means you don't need to worry about power versus Skaven or Chaos to hit breakpoints the way you would in campaign. I ran power versus monsters between weaves 1 and 80 before needing to switch back to slightly modified breakpoints for Kata 3. So, 
I keep harping on how things can kill you in one hit in high level weaves. While this is true, you can make it effectively false by moving away from your precious bark skin. Natural Bond makes it so that you are constantly, passively gaining green health. If you are at full health and take a hit that would one-shot you while running Natural Bond, that passive HP generation kicks in and immediately puts you at one health instead of zero. This is a fairly simple tip, but is really important to do once you start reaching 120 plus to essentially double your life expectancy. Watch out, however, if you've taken some friendly fire damage or a little damage from a flame rat or rattling, as this natural bond trick only works while you're at full health. Hopefully, these overarching tips can get you started on your push to 160. If you thought this video was helpful, feel free to like and subscribe, and if you get stuck on a specific weave, be sure to check out my channel for the rest of the weaves guidebook videos, as they will go in depth on what spawns to look out for and strategies for each weave. You can also reach out to me or a litany of other very capable players in the Ranked Weaves Discord linked in the description below. Take care.